Let's quickly talk about how to create an LLC operating agreement. So here's an overview I want you to pay attention to. Let's first talk about the definition here. What is an LLC operating agreement? So this is essentially a contract between uh, all the members of an LLC that actually materializes business operations and relationships between the members and the company. So this contract can be uh, in-depth, can be uh, broad also, and it depends on what the members want, okay? Common elements that LLCs include in an operating agreement are member ownership details, management structure, scope of management duties, voting procedures, you have profit and loss distribution, location and schedule of member meetings, transfer of ownership protocol, accounting and financial information. It really depends on what the members want. So here is the approach for you. Does your member, does your LLC need an operating agreement? Well, it's not really, no, because uh, it is the best business practice for every LLC to have an operating agreement in place, even, even if one is not required in your state. This is because LLCs without one will be subject to the default LLC laws to their states and which might not be in the best interest of the members. Currently, there are only uh, five uh, states that require an LLC to have an operating agreement in place for compliance. So you have California, you have uh, Delaware, you have Maine, Missouri, and New York. So this is important to really clarify things in the operating agreement. Let me give you a very simple example. Let's say uh, three classmates created an LLC for their small business they started in college. The three friends decide not to put an, an operating agreement in place, but they agree that no members should be able to sell or transfer their interest uh, in the LLC. In other words, if one dies or otherwise otherwise wants to get out of the LLC, that member's int uh, interest will be redivided amongst the remaining two members instead of giving to someone else. However, the default laws in the state allow LLC members to freely transfer their interest with no restriction. So, 10 years after forming the LLC, one of the friends decides to sell their interest in the LLC to a neighbor. Since the friends never created an operating agreement that, mat that materialized the, uh, the transfer preference and the default laws support the member's choice to sell their interest, the default laws will likely prevail if there were a lawsuit filed by the remaining members, meaning the friend will be able to transfer their interest to the neighbor despite the other members not wanting him to. So having an operating agreement in place would have allowed the remaining members to stop the member from selling their interest. By the way, boss, welcome back to the show. It's really a pleasure to have you here. Make yourself comfortable. You are going to enjoy today's conversation. Now, let me give you the steps you need to follow if you are trying to create an LLC operating agreement. The most important step when creating an, an operating agreement is making sure the members are on the same page about what will be in the agreement, right? That's what I said earlier. In terms of granularity, this is very important. So you want, so an LLC agreement, an LLC operating agreement can be as deep and broad as you want it. So you want to have people on the same page. This should not be an issue if you're running a single member LLC, but LLCs with multiple members will need to put more time into the task. Throughout the steps, there will be notes regarding search, differ search differences with uh, single, single member LLCs. And you also should know that uh, most LLC formation services can help you create an agreement for an additional cost. This will usually cost less than hiring an attorney and will be less stressful than creating one yourself from scratch. So step number one, you need to determine ownership and profit and loss distribution. So before actually putting anything down on paper, you want to have the name, address, and ownership percentage of all members. Usually, the ownership percentage is determined by the amount of money each member contributed to start the LLC. For example, a member who contributes 50% of startup cost will be 50% ownership interest in the LLC. Some LLCs choose to give equal ownership to all members to keep it simple. So the important thing is that everyone agrees on each member's ownership percentage. Make sure that everybody agrees. This is important. Step number two. You need to establish management structure. You want to decide which management structure your LLC will operate under. So the members will always make big, de big picture decisions on behalf of the LLC, but the day-to-day -day operations can either be split between members. So here we have a member managed or handled by a manager. Now here we have a manager managed. If the, ma if the members choose a manager managed structure, they can elect one of the members to fill the role or they can hire an outside manager. It really depends on what the uh, LLC members want. So common day-to-day -day operations include creating contracts, 
hiring employees, managing employees, making decisions about wh- how the business is going to roll, like in terms of business vision, business model. So those are elements that you really pay attention to. Now, if you are a single member LLC, everything, think about it. Everything is actually uh, in your in your hands. First of all, you can designate yourself as having 100% ownership interest in the LLC. This is an opportunity to define your ownership if other members are added later. For example, you can reserve a minimum of 50% ownership no matter how many members are added in the future. By the way, boss, I want to quickly remind you of today's topic. We are having a conversation about how to create an LLC operating agreement. Step number three. You want to assign rights and responsibilities. So after establishing the management structure, you want to uh, materialize the rights and responsibilities of all members in the ALC. So listing these details in writing ensures the information is known to all members and can be used as a reference if clarification is needed in the future. Remember, I, I said earlier to you that if the law, if things are kept verbally, if uh, the laws in the states are not really in, the, in your favor and there is a problem, there is a dispute, whatever, and you go to court, the laws of that state will prevail. That's why you want to put things in, in, uh, in writing. Just like with other parts of the, the operating agreements, this session can be as broad or as specific as the members prefer. And you might actually choose to simply outline the voting protocol and designate overall duties of the members, for example, position within the company. And if you are choosing a member-managed structure, your operating agreement should list daily responsibilities and roles for each member. So and now I just want to say one thing is that if you have a detailed business plan, let's say you are a small, like a single a single member LLC, if you have a detailed business plan, this section might overlap with that document. And uh, in that case, you may want to include your broad rights and responsibilities as a sole member. You can also add your business plan as an attachment to the operating agreement for a reference. Step number four, you want to detail the terms of this of a dissolution. In other words, what are the circumstances under which the LLC can be dissolved? So while, while it may be uh, it may sound odd or strange or whatever to include a plan for the end of your business in a document that's created at conception, it's important to be prepared in the event of a company's dissolution. You know, stuff happens. People actually uh, have the best intentions uh, from the get-go, but stuff happens and they, you know, they have to disband. So believe it or not, many LLC have an expiration date when they are created. So this is usually the case when a company is created for a project or a specific purpose. So when the project is complete, the LLC automatically dissolves. So if you plan to have a project-specific LLC, then including dissolution terms is a must. And if you don't want to include terms in your agreement, then you will be subject to the default LLC laws in your state. And again, you know, in, in some cases, you may not like the, the default LLC laws. So this may actually delay your LLC's dissolution and make uh, the process more time-consuming than if you had planned for it in advance. So it's always better to, to take things in your hand and really do things beforehand so that you are know you know exactly what you want and you're not going to allow you're not going to outsource that decision to uh, to a court of law because remember the court of law will, will only apply the law and that law might be detrimental to your LLC. I want to give you an example here so we have a clear idea what you really are putting yourself into and let's go through an example of uh of having uh an llc operating agreement in the state of new york i want you to look with me on, on the on the screen here so you go to to a, a website called eforms.com slash operating agreement and choose uh new york so you have new york state so here you put the name of the llc so here we have a uh, sweaty kiwi llc Next screenshot here, you want to put uh, the uh, what the what's the business purpose of the LLC. So we put here to engage in and conduct any and and all lawful businesses. So lawful business rather. So you you click that, you click next, and then here you have uh, you put the where the LLC was formed. Again, we put here uh, New York State. This is just an example. And here next screenshot here, you actually have to put uh, the uh, the LLC's principal place of business. In other words, you know, you put the address, the zip, the uh, street address, everything. So we put that, and the next here you are have to you have to put the the like basically you have to put. Do you know when the LC was formed? So we're talking about the historical point of the historical uh, 
the information here. So we put the formation date. So you have to put that in the, uh, the, the thing. And the next year you, you have to put if uh, the LLC is a single member or a multi-member. So we put for the, uh, for this exercise, we put the uh, multi-member. So you click next and then you have to put the end New York. Uh, so basically you put uh, how many members are in the LLC. You put the ownership. So we put 50% for ease of, of uh, for, for just for clarity and uh, simplicity here. Next screenshot here. You have to put basically uh, how many members are in the LLC, but also the name. So we have to put the members, the first member name and the second member name. So when, the thing is, the thing is that you have services like this. I'm going to continue. Don't worry, though. There are services like this that really uh, make things a lot easier for you. If you have to uh, actually, if you don't want to pay, let's say you don't want to pay uh, a lawyer or you, you don't want to pay uh, an LLC service to uh, write your operating agreement, you can actually do it yourself. There are templates. And uh, so just make sure that you are as granular as possible. By the way, boss, I want to quickly remind you of today's topic. We are having a conversation about how to create an LLC operating agreement in this year. So I want to continue here. So if you, I want you to look right now on the screen, boss. So basically here, you, you have to put, uh, so basically what I did here is that I put the uh, LC membership, so you can put uh, 50%, 25%. Again, it doesn't really matter, but for, if you're doing something for real, because this, this is fictitious though, but if you're doing something for real, make sure that all the uh, percentages actually add up to 100%. So you have to put the first name, the first member's name, the second member's name, all that kind of stuff. So then next, you have to actually, uh, you know, talk about capital contribution. So here we put no, that there were no sort of capital contributions. Capital contributions means money. So you are putting money to actually... Uh, to actually uh, seed the LLC. If you did, make sure that you put exactly how much you put and uh, you indicate here how much you put and the percentage ownership, the percentage of, of the capital contribution. So it can be 50%, it can be 100%, it can be uh, 75%, it can be anything, okay? And uh, so this is fine, we go to next. So here, the, the, the wizard is asking you to actually uh, select a registered agent. So you have to choose a registered agent. So here we, cho we chose a uh, fictitious register agent but, but in your case you have to choose uh the right if you know the person if you know the not the if you know the uh, the address or the service you can put the name here the first name last name put the address the zip everything and the state where the uh agent is and uh next here you have to actually uh, choose your tax status so as an llc you can be taxed as a partnership as an s corporation as a c corporation and other so here we chose a partnership. So if you ch if you choose partnership, that means what? It means that you will be filing form uh, 1065, and this is and you have to file along with form 1065. You have to file um, Schedule K1. So Schedule K1. This is basically so Schedule K1 and uh, form 1065 are informational returns. So basically, you're not paying taxes at the business level, but you are paying taxes at the at the personal level. Okay, and if you have to, if you want to uh, file as a as an S corporation, you might have to file form 2553 to do that conversion next here you need to actually uh talk about how the llc will be managed so we put the members so this will be a member managed llc and here also they're asking you like a uh, llc for a temporary period in other words you have a, a dissolution uh sort of uh, dates you put it here you put next and you put uh, the the uh the profit distribution how you intend this to happen and then you also have to put uh, the uh, business decision Next here, let's let's move on. So in terms of assignments, again, we're still talking about a New York LLC operating agreement. So here, assignments is really an important element because here I just chose can a member assign or transfer their LLC ownership interest. That's what I was I was telling you earlier that you can have uh, the LLC agreement as deep as you want it. So here I put yes, no restrictions. Next, you actually uh, you actually can uh, inform the the agreement when it comes to uh, the member withdrawal. So there are no restrictions. Can a member withdraw from the company? Yes, with no restrictions. If there are, if you want, if you have conditions, if you want to have conditions, this is where you have to specify it, okay? And uh, also, let's go next to the next screenshot here. Here it says new members. New members may be added to the company with no restrictions. 
or if there are restrictions, if there are, if, if uh, upon approval of uh, a majority of people, I mean, like you have to really specify everything. And uh, so next screenshot here, let's talk about the certificate of ownerships, certificates of ownership. So should, a, should such a certificate of issuance be made to each member of the LLC? We put no for simplicity's sake. You know, we're not really trying to complicate things here and this is fine. And also the next screenshot, we are speaking about annual meeting. So annual meeting will be held on the first day of January, whatever. So here you have to specify the, the, the dates and you can specify the time also. And next here, you have to put the date of agreement. So you have to sign and you have to sign everything when it comes to the, uh, to, the to, 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 to this document. So, uh, yeah, so you, uh, you put the dates here and you click save. If you click save, you are good to go. And what will happen here is that once you click save, you will see that, uh, the, uh, so the, the wizard will actually give you a PDF so you can see the PDF. The first, this here is a, here is the first PDF on the screen. I want you to look right now on the screen so you have a clear idea. So it, it basically summarizes everything that you just made. Okay. So here, the first screen, the, the first screenshot. And, uh, here is the second screenshot. Now I just chose the first page and the last page because I didn't want to go through all the 50 pages that, uh, that I, that I really saw in the, uh, in the in the PDF. I want to give you a bonus before we close to this conversation. So when we talk about uh, LLC operating agreement, the question is, can you make your own operating agreement? Yes. Oh, yes, definitely. You know, you can. The operating agreement can be as complex or as simple as the members prefer. You don't need to be an attorney to create one. You can either create one from scratch, use a free or paid for template. You just saw what we, what we just did. You can use an online formation service, or you can hire an attorney at a flat rate to draft one on your behalf. And uh, so if you want to create a simple uh, operating agreement, you can always fill in a free online template and add any other details you think are important to the longevity of your business. That's what we just did. Then you will sign the document in front of a notary and keep it somewhere safe. Make sure you sign the document if you don't if you don't sign the documents this is really uh, this is not a this is not a good thing okay and uh, so do you need an operating agreement if it's just you yes you don't need it but it's just best practice for all LLCs, including single member LLCs, to have an operating agreement in place even if you are the only member this will strengthen this will buttress your liability protection and can be helpful if you ever decide to add members down the line you never know i mean Today, you are starting your business. You are the only one on board, but you don't know what will happen like uh, one year from now or 10 years from now, your business, or you might, you might find people who are smart, who are, who have potential, who have business potential, and you're trying to really add them to your ALC. So if you have a, a strong operating agreement in place, this could be really, really fantastic for you. And so, as I said before, there are five states right now that require ALCs to have operating agreements. All the other, all the other 45 do not actually ask anything, including the, uh, so all the, all the other 45 and the district of Columbia, they do not actually require anything at all. So what are the five states that require LCs to have, uh, operating agreements? So you have California. I think I said this before, but I'm saying it again, California, Delaware, Maine, Missouri, and New York. So the, those are the only states that require or or LLCs to have an operating agreement in place. It has to be in place, okay? Not letter one, no. It has to be in place. And still, it is the best business practice, okay, to have one in place regardless of whether it is required. This is for your own protection. This is also for the protection of uh, anybody else who will come in, in the business at some point. We're talking about the LLC members. And uh, so, and also, even if you're a single member LLC, imagine you're a single member LLC and you are thinking about hiring employees. If you need to hire employees and you want to actually solidify the uh, the, the appearance of uh, the business, you just make sure to buttress the legal aspect of it. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. In today's conversation, I'll just explain to you how to create an LLC operating agreement so I actually give you the overview, the, the approach, and I give you the steps you need to follow to actually uh, create an, uh, an operating agreement for your LLC. So determine ownership and profit and loss statement, establish the management structure, assign rights and responsibilities, 
detail the terms of this solution. And I give you an example. So you kind of walk through so you have a clear idea what I'm talking about. Thank you so much. God bless you. I'll see you another time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous. <laughs>